Hey, what's going on everyone? Matthew from TheRightTrader.com back today with another daily crypto update. Today we're going to go over our normal schedule and we're also going to talk about the fact that we're now re-entering back into a consolidation phase. I'm going to talk about how long that's likely going to last. And we did experience a slight pullback over the past 24 hours for the general market. Nothing major, but definitely moving back towards support. So we'll have to see if we're going to remain above support and you know, continue consolidation for the next week or two, or if we might drop below those support levels. I'll go over all of that in a more detailed technical analysis on TradingView in just a second, and we'll start off with Bitcoin. But just wanted to also give a quick shout out to my premium content and my Twitter. If you want live cryptocurrency market updates, make sure to go check out both those things. I'll have a link to that in the description of this video. And let's get started with the Bitcoin technical analysis. So as you can see, Bitcoin is in a pretty tight consolidation pattern between $9,000 and $10,000. We're actually pushing back towards that $9,000 support level. But what I should mention is that we're in a you know bigger consolidation pattern, which is our symmetrical triangle formation right here, right? This downtrend line and this uptrend line, these two pink trend lines, form the symmetrical triangle that we're moving in. Now, usually with this pattern based on, you know, technical analysis theory, basically, we do end up coming most of the time towards the end of the formation before either breaking towards the upside or downside. And as you can see, we still have a little bit of ways to go till we get there. Now, it is always possible that we end up breaking out a little bit earlier than expected, and that's what we're going to be looking for over the next few days. We need to make sure for that to happen that we remain above $9,000 and that we start pushing, uh, you know, consolidating basically in between $9,000 and $10,000, as you can see in this tight range, uh, all the way up until our downtrend line. And once we reach this level, which I think we have a decent chance of doing over the next week or so, then, you know, maybe we'll get a, a breakout a little bit earlier than expected or we'll start moving lower. Before, uh, before that, though, if we're going to see a drop, uh, earlier than expected, we'll, we'll be looking for a move below $9,000. We'll, we'll probably be pushing lower uh, towards the downtrend line if that were to happen. But $9,000 is the support level that we want to remain above. And if we drop below that, next stop is around that $8,000 area, uh, which is in line with the end of our symmetrical triangle formation. And like I said, we're not 100% sure on what's going to happen, but usually with this pattern, we do end up coming towards the end of the formation. And what's important to realize with that is if Bitcoin falls lower, right, to $8,000, the rest of the market will probably take yet another small hit. Now, let's jump right over to Ethereum and see what Ethereum has been doing. We can see that Ethereum is pushing back towards the $700 support level. Um, it actually slightly below that right now, $696. A lot of support at $695, actually. Now, indicators not giving us much information. We don't have super strong support right here. Uh, this is, you know, just some support based on previous candlesticks, but nothing major. Our next major support level is, uh, you know, a bit of support near $600, but really $500 is our next major support level. And we'll have to see if over the next few days we're going to be able to consolidate above uh, $695 where we're going to reach the end of the downtrend line, see if we can make, you know, some kind of move towards the upside happen there. That would obviously be the bullish scenario, but I'd say don't be surprised if we do end up uh, dropping lower here going at least towards $600 uh, as Bitcoin may go towards $8,000. And moving over to Litecoin, uh, it's in a bit of a different situation. We just recently dropped back into our downtrend and we're probably going to move uh, closer to $165 over the next few days. At that point, we'll have to see if we're going to be moving uh, even lower than that. Definitely a good chance of that, I'd say, especially with uh, the possibility of Bitcoin moving towards $8,000. And I'm going to go ahead and put in this uptrend line in red, and a pattern will be become much more clear for all of you. So as you can see, these two red trend lines form a symmetrical triangle pattern. What I'd say is that we're probably going to move uh, below $165 and then start consolidating between $145 and $165. So a pretty tight range there. And once we reach the end of this formation, then we're, we're all either break towards the upside or downside, and that's what's going to set the trend. Uh, really let us know where Litecoin and most likely, you know, other cryptocurrencies will be heading. And a lot of it does depend on how, you know, especially Bitcoin does over the next uh, few days and really on which side it ends up breaking out of because it is also in a symmetrical triangle formation. We're going to move over now to the nanotechnical analysis. 
Nano definitely uh, started downtrending again in the short term. I'm gonna go ahead and draw that in. So we'll see if we're gonna be able to break out of that. Uh, that would allow for you know a little bit more stabilization. For now, we are finding support at $114,000. Depends if we're gonna pop out of the downtrend line, then we may see some consolidation yield a little bit higher near $120,000. But I'd say between $114,000 and, and the downtrend line over here, is probably you know the the range that we'll be moving in over uh, the next you know trading sessions and and then we'll have to see if we can make you know a breakout happen above the downtrend line or if we're just going to consolidate and then end up moving below 114,000 satoshis, which is then going to push us towards 100,000 satoshis. We'll just have to wait and see for what is going to happen. But what is likely is that we will remain above 114,000 satoshis, kind of bounce up and down uh, over the next week or so. And let's go ahead and take a look at our next crypto, which is going to be Ripple. Ripple uh, has also taken a bit of a hit, of course, wasn't able to avoid the drop like most of the cryptocurrencies out there. And we saw Ripple move below 84 cents, which was a pretty important support level. We're now putting in some very flat consolidation right below that. I'd say that's likely to continue. We may come back down a little bit towards 65 cents. And indicator is pretty flat right now, not giving us much information. We definitely want to remain above 65 cents because if we break below that, we'll probably be moving back towards, you know, 50 cents, maybe even 30 cents, which is pretty worrisome considering that we were at $3 uh, just a while back. And like I said, for now, probably going to see some pretty tight consolidations. That's further confirmed by the very tight Bollinger Bands. And we'll just have to wait and see how that plays out, right? If we're going to break out or break towards the downside. Uh, with the rest of the market. Now let's go ahead and take a look at NEO. And NEO, I believe, did take a bit of a hit yesterday. So let's see what's going on. Uh, NEO moved back below its downtrend line. We're actually dipping slightly below our 85 cent support level. And as for the indicators, all downtrending, no real uh, bullish signals for now. We'll see if we're able to get a small bounce here, maybe consolidate uh, between $85 and $100. That would be a little bit more bullish at this point. And I think there's a pretty good chance of that happening over the next uh, week or two. But we do have a pretty uh, violent downtrending middle band. And we could definitely see, you know, especially with all this downward pressure from the, the trend lines, a drop a little bit lower, right? At least down to $75, uh, maybe even a bit lower than that, moving towards $65. And, and pretty quickly, we'll be moving towards that $43 support level uh, if it continues in this downtrend, which for now, it definitely is. So I'll we'll have to keep an eye on that for NEO. But let's jump over to Stellar, see what Stellar has been doing. It looks like Stellar is moving back towards its 3,000 Satoshi support level. We are still uptrending on the indicators, so no more downtrend there, which is good. With that being said, obviously showing some weakness on the slight pullback here. A little bit of selling volume, nothing major, which is good. And I'd say we're very likely to continue our consolidation between 3,000 and 3,500 Satoshis. We're very flat on the Bollinger Band range, uh, pretty much in line with our support and resistance levels. So probably going to get some more consolidation here, which is pretty good, right? Considering the rest of the market is at risk of dropping lower, I think Stellar should be able to hold up pretty well here. Of course, if we are going to be moving lower, we're going to be looking for a move below 3,000 Satoshis to indicate that. And if that were to happen, probably going to find some support off the downtrend line over here, the green trend line. So let's jump over to Vertcoin, and we're going to take a look at what Vertcoin has been up to. Definitely showing some weakness. We had an attempt of breaking out of the downtrend line that did not hold. We're now moving back, uh, shoving into that downtrend line. As for the indicators, all downtrending. Probably going to move towards that 30 line on the RSI. We'll see if we get a bounce there. But I'd say a very high chance that we move back towards uh, $2 here. And then if we drop below $2, then we'll be moving all the way down to our $1.54 support level, which is definitely a possibility here for Vertcoin, especially considering that the market may take another hit. It'd be pretty easy for it to get back towards $1.54 and, and $2 seems, you know, almost inevitable at this point. At least we'll, we'll you know, have, have flushed things out if we get down there and, and then we may start consolidating in this bigger range here. So let's go over to Lisk. We're going to see what Lisk has been doing. Previously, one of the stronger cryptocurrencies out there uh, definitely took a hit with the rest of the market. And as you can see, we're finding support on our previous downtrend line over here, but we're definitely moving lower. 
nonetheless. And we're coming up back to our $12 support level. With that being said, we do have you know some slight uh, flattening on the indicators, which is always a good sign. But we still need to wait for confirmation for some bullish crossovers for anything good to happen for now. And I'd say I don't really see list dropping below $12 just yet. Uh, if the market takes a pretty big hit, probably going to be moving back towards $10 or maybe even a little bit below that near $8. Uh, that would definitely be, you know, not horrible, but definitely worse, right? Uh, we'll just have to see if we're able to hold above $12. Like I said, for the next week, I think we will be able to hold above $12. Let's go over to our next crypto. That's going to be Cardano. And I believe Cardano has been very flat. Actually, now moving a little bit towards the upside, which is very interesting. Indicators gaining some steam as well. Uh, got some bullish crossovers here on the MACD and histograms. Still want to see that kind of pan out a little bit more. But we also have our RSI that's moving back towards our 30 line. And we'll see if we get a breakout above that. It's not going to be easy because we do have this longer term downtrend line that's putting pressure on the price. We also have our uh, 3000 Satoshi support level, sorry, resistance level. And we want to get back above both those things to turn bullish again. Now what I said with Cardano previously is definitely a pretty good chance that we do end up breaking out of the downtrend line. I don't expect any kind of massive jump. Uh, definitely not anything you know all the way up to 4,000 Satoshis. At best I'd say up to 3,000 Satoshis. And that'll be good because at least we'll be out of the downtrend. We'll be able to put in some consolidation and then hopefully after that move towards the upside because if you look at the Bollinger Bands we're, we're in our downtrend here. Uh, hopefully, as you can see, the price is flattening out. So the Bollinger Band should follow. We'll probably put in some consolidation with the Bollinger Bands. And then we'll have this nice uh, U-shaped formation that should start to appear where the price starts moving back higher after a bit of consolidation that we still have to put in. That might take a little bit of time. Now let's go over to IOTA for our last cryptocurrency of the daily crypto update. And IOTA has been in a very tight consolidation between $1.13 and $1.47. Indicators not giving us any signals right now. Slight downtrend on the Bollinger Bands middle band. We'll see if we're able to get back above a dollar and forty-seven cents. That would be good. That would put us in a bit of a higher consolidation. But for now, no signals telling us that we're not going to consolidate between a dollar and thirteen cents and a dollar and forty-seven cents. So I'd say that's likely to continue at this point until we get some further indications on what's the next move to happen. That being said, everyone, this is the end of the daily crypto update. Thanks for watching and have a great day.